Hi, and welcome to the Graphisoft EcoDesigner Star Energy Efficient Building Design video series. This movie is entitled Project Specific Low Energy Building Solution Set, and it will show you how to choose the most appropriate low energy building design strategy for your design project. The workflow starts with creating a baseline building to be used for testing the relevant low energy building solutions one by one. This method is called sensitivity analysis. It enables designers to investigate the feasibility of different low energy building solutions. Finally, the low energy building solution set that is most appropriate for our design project can be determined. Here you can see our sample building information model, BIM, created in Graphisoft ARCHICAD. It's a multi-story, multi-purpose building built next to an existing apartment block. Here you can see the 3D ARCHICAD zones that represent the internal spaces. With the help of these zones and the architectural model elements, the building energy model, or BIM for short, is created automatically. Since it originates from the BIM, the EcoDesigner BIM automatically contains all the necessary building geometry and material property data for the building energy simulations without any manual data input. Use the Energy Model Review Palette to visualize and also to edit the building energy model. The Thermal Blocks page lists all the thermal blocks of the design. Let's turn on the Energy Model View to display the thermal blocks selected on the list with colors in the 3D view. The rest of the building is shown in wire frame view. Groups of ARCHICAD zones can be specified as thermal blocks. For example, this is the staircase thermal block and it contains several ARCHICAD zones. The individual zones can also be displayed in the 3D window by just simply selecting them in the list. There is a retail area on the ground floor, above which there is an office level. Various apartments can also be found in the example building, one of these is a duplex, and there's another apartment in the loft as well. Finally, there are some storage spaces in the basement area. We can define thermal blocks by dragging and dropping the 3D ARCHICAD zones into a thermal block on the list. Naturally, new thermal blocks can also be created here. If we select the list entries on the structure page of the Energy Review Palette, then the appearance of the building energy model changes in the 3D view. The colors now represent the category and orientation of the building energy model's opaque structures. The structures list is populated automatically based on the ARCHICAD building information model. The integration of building energy modeling with the architectural model allows geometry and material property data takeoff with unparalleled accuracy. EcoDesigner STAR performs very detailed hourly dynamic energy analysis based on this architectural input data in order to produce highly accurate energy simulation results. The example project used for this demo represents a phase in the architectural design process when no low energy building solutions have been applied yet. The shape and zoning have already been decided at this stage, but the final composites – facade, solutions, window placements, shading, etc. – can still be easily changed. Naturally, the building systems have not been defined at this point either. In the energy efficient building design process presented in this movie series, we will use EcoDesigner STAR to optimize the architectural design first and then to evaluate the effect of different building system strategies, for example natural versus mechanical ventilation, in order to find the best combination of solutions specific to the project. As you can see, a cross section of the building. The project in this design phase has very simple constructional solutions, reinforced concrete external walls with minimal thermal insulation on the ground floor, lightweight block walls, a double ventilated composite roof structure above the loft area, and a quite simple flat roof construction as well. Let's have a quick look at one of the mediocre composite structure's components. Here are all the skins of the simple flat roof with their properties a load-bearing concrete slab, sloping screed, waterproofing membrane, thermal insulation, and gravel on the top. Note, 
You can modify composites or create new ones using the dedicated element attribute dialog from the options menu. Thanks to ARCHICAD's priority-based connections, all structural details are automatically, accurately, and also correctly connected. The connections are constructed in accordance with the intersection priority settings of the skin's materials. The automatically generated model details update in every architectural BIM view as the model is changed. Here you can see the 3D energy model view of one of the project's flat roofs. It's located above flat roof number 3. Here's the thermal block representing flat number 3. It's located partially under the pitched roof and the loft and partially under the flat roof. Let's find this flat roof on the structures list of the energy model review palette. First, change the display order of the elements to list them by thermal blocks. Select the flat roof on the list from the structural elements assigned to flat number 3. Note that it also highlights in the 3D view. The structures list contains the name of the composite used to model the flat roof. Let's open the U-Value calculator to check the thermal characteristics of this flat roof composite. On this dialog, the skins of the composite flat roof slab are listed the same way as on the composite element attribute dialog, but on the U-Value calculator panel, the thermal properties of the skins are also displayed. These composite skin properties can be individually edited to fine-tune the default physical properties of the ARCHICAD building material used to model the skin, or the best matching material item from the material catalog can be assigned to the skin. Based on the skin characteristics, the external and internal heat transfer coefficients, the steady state overall heat transfer coefficient of the composite structure is automatically calculated. Use the switch to decide whether to display this calculation result as a U value or an R value, thermal resistance, which is the reciprocal of the U value. Let's open a section model view of the project to have a closer look at one of the construction details. This detail is located at the junction of the external wall, the floor slab, and the balcony slab. Let's open the corresponding ARCHICAD detail, where we've already added some dimensions and other drawing elements to the elements of the 3D building model. Let's run a thermal bridge simulation on this detail. The easy-to-use dedicated wizard guides us through the steps of the thermal bridge simulation's setup process. First, we have to define the exterior areas by assigning a dark blue color to them. In a similar way, we also have to define the internal areas by assigning a red color to them. This detail has no connection with the ground, so there's no soil area to define. The next step is to make sure that each skin and structural element of the detail has the right building material assigned to it. On the left side of the next wizard dialog, the detail's building materials are listed. Most of these materials come directly from the model elements. Use the list on the dialog to highlight the detail component's building material data, one by one, and the corresponding graphical representations will be highlighted on the detail preview on the right side of the dialog. For this example building, the building materials and thermal properties of the individual skins have already been correctly defined. Besides fine-tuning the building material assignments, the list can also be used to directly override the thermal characteristics of the individual skins. Let's proceed and check out the simulation options. The adaptive mesh representing the calculation sampling points can be visualized on the preview. By changing the reference grid size for the calculation, we can run more detailed or less detailed thermal bridge simulations. Let's start the simulation. The results appear in seconds, offering two options for visualization, the temperature view and the energy flow view. Hover the cursor over the colored temperature diagram on the left side to read the calculated thermal characteristics at every point, while the detail's overall thermal performance is described by the linear heat transfer coefficient psi value. The results show that there's a significant thermal bridge at this example balcony detail. Even though a thermal break is inserted between the balcony slab and the floor slab. On the other thermal bridge simulation result view, the energy flow is represented by colors. 
Again, we can use the cursor to display the simulation results at every point of the detail. The next step is to apply the results of the thermal bridge simulation in the hourly building energy simulation. First, Measure the length of the balcony slab to floor slab joint on the floor plan to determine the length along which the thermal bridge occurs. Then use the structures list of the energy model review palette to add the thermal bridge to the relevant thermal block and to enter the thermal bridge's length. As a result, the thermal bridge will be included in the energy balance simulation and will influence the building's overall energy performance. Let's also review the characteristics of the transparent surfaces, in other words, the fenestration of the building envelope. Select all entries on the openings page of the Energy Model Review Palette to highlight all the windows in the 3D Building Energy Model view. ARCHICAD and EcoDesigner STAR can perform model-based solar irradiation studies, or solar analysis, on these transparent building elements. When looking at the building's geometry, we expect the selected window to be partially shaded by the balcony above it. Let's run the model-based solar irradiation study to determine the annual shadow mask on this example window that has a southern orientation. There are two diagrams that display the results of the solar analysis. The horizontal axes of both programs shows the months of the year, while the hours of the days are displayed along the vertical axes. Yellow on the percentage of glazed area diagram represents the times of the year when the example window receives direct sunshine. Blue represents the times of the year when the window is shaded by the balcony above it. Hover the cursor over the diagram to identify the days and times of the year and also read the portion of the unshaded area on that specific date and time. It's clearly visible that during the summertime when the direct solar radiation's angle of incidence is high, the window is shaded by the balcony. The direct solar radiation on glazed surfaces diagram also contains the effect of cloudy days defined in the weather file. Based on this input, the annual integrated direct radiation value is calculated by the program and displayed on the bottom of the solar analysis dialog. Note that this value is specific to the example window and its position on the designed building's envelope. As a second example, select another southern window, this time one that's not shaded by a balcony, and visualize the corresponding solar radiation study results. You can see that this window is not shaded during the hot summer months. Consequently, the annual integrated direct solar radiation value assigned to it automatically by the solar analysis is much higher. Let's investigate a west-facing window as well. Note that in this case, the direct solar irradiation is only present during the afternoons due to the western orientation. The annual integrated direct solar radiation value is automatically calculated for this window as well. Edit the window's thermal characteristics using the openings page of the Energy Model Review Palette. Glazing and frame characteristics can be assigned to the ARCHICAD BIM model elements using the openings catalog. We can also provide individual values for each statement if we wish. In the example building model, we have already assigned some basic glazing and frames from the catalog to the windows. Please note that the opening list also contains the infiltration properties of every window. In the current state of the design, prior to building energy optimization, these are set to rather high values. There are no shading devices assigned to the openings either. Naturally, all these settings will be reflected in the results of the overall energy balance calculations. So far, we have defined the geometry of the building, created 3D zones and thermal blocks based on the zones, and defined the thermal properties of the building structures and the openings. Please note, we have not defined any actual building systems yet. The list of building systems used for heating, cooling, and for ventilation is displayed on the building systems dialog. Every system assigned to the project at this stage of the low energy building design process is set to not yet specified. This is the setting to be used in EcoDesigner STAR for energy demand calculation. Let's have a closer look at operational energy consumption metrics to fully understand the different terms that describe energy usage.
The energy balance simulation is used to calculate the building's energy demand, indicated in green at the bottom of the diagram. Energy demand represents the amount of energy needed to heat up or to cool down a building in order to provide appropriate internal thermal comfort throughout the year. No additional information is needed about the building systems if we are interested only in the building's energy demand. We only need to specify whether the systems exist or not. However, if we are also interested in the fuel consumption of the building, then the building system's characteristics must also be entered. In this case, for example, the simulation considers system efficiencies in order to determine building system-related energy losses. Not every system is able to satisfy a certain demand. Machines are not equally efficient under different loads either. And all these influence fuel consumption. Therefore, proper building systems data input is inevitable at this stage of the design process. Based on the fuel consumption, EcoDesigner STAR also calculates the primary energy consumption of the building. The calculation method here is quite similar to that used by the program to obtain the fuel cost or the carbon footprint results. The fuel consumption data is multiplied with the relevant coefficient in each case. In this design phase, however, we are only interested in calculating the energy demand of the building project. The building energy performance metric is strictly proportional to the architectural design. Therefore, it's a great indicator regarding the success of our low energy building design efforts. No building system characteristics are input for this round of the calculations yet. Heating, cooling, and ventilation are all defined as not yet specified building systems. Later, we'll configure these systems for the fuel consumption calculations. The operation profiles of the building project are also required for the energy calculations. Each thermal block must have an operation profile assigned to it. It is possible to modify existing operation profiles or create new ones. The Daily Profile Editor dialog displays the editable profile data for the selected reference day. Here we can set the required internal maximum and minimum temperatures of thermal blocks and specify the characteristics of internal heat gains. Multiple reference days can be created and scheduled to cover the entire calculation year. We're now ready to run the first round of simulations, so let's click the Start Energy Simulation button. The dynamic energy analysis is executed by EcoDesigner STAR for the entire year on an hourly basis. This will take a couple of minutes. When the energy simulation is completed, the Energy Performance Evaluation Report is displayed on the screen. The content of the report can be customized by selecting the required chapters from the list on the left. In this case, we wish to include those chapters in the report that are relevant for the energy demand calculation, the project key values, the project energy balance, the thermal block geometry information, the key values of each individual thermal block, and the energy balance diagrams of the thermal blocks. Here you can see the thermal block energy balances one by one. Please note how different they are. EcoDesigner STAR allows us to study and fine-tune the energy performance of each thermal block individually. The built-in energy evaluation feature of ARCHICAD, for example, only displays the project's energy balance, but does not provide the energy balance diagrams of the individual thermal blocks. The availability of thermal block energy performance output is a major feature difference between the standard energy evaluation functionality of ARCHICAD and EcoDesigner STAR. EcoDesigner STAR provides far more details about the design project's energy characteristics. The HVAC Design Data chapter of the report contains the most important output data of the energy demand calculation, peak loads, annual loads, and annual unmet load hour information. Include daily temperature profiles in the Energy Performance Evaluation PDF document to display temperature values for specific days of the year. These days can be the coldest, hottest day, and or the days when the peak loads occur. We can also specify days representing typical spring, summer, autumn, and winter conditions. Daily temperature profiles for any of the thermal blocks can be selected for documentation. Let's also select the energy consumption by targets, 
and energy consumption by sources chapters. These are not very relevant now as no building systems have been defined yet, but these are good for validating the demand calculation. Finally, let's click the Save as PDF button to save the Energy Performance Evaluation Report as a PDF document. Let's open the previously created Energy Performance Evaluation Report. This represents the project in its so-called baseline design state before any low energy building solution has been applied. The next step is to use this baseline energy evaluation report to determine the most appropriate low energy design strategy for our project. Please remember, we've specified mediocre building structures and openings for the baseline design. Therefore, the average heat transfer coefficient, for example, is rather high for the building shell. Let's have a look at the project energy balance. Heat loss via transmission is significant throughout the year. We've specified a rather high infiltration rate for the openings earlier, so it's not surprising that the building shell's overall infiltration at 50 pascal pressure is three air changes per hour, a pretty high value. The passive house standard, for example, requires this value to be below 0.5. Still, the effect of the infiltration, represented in light blue on the energy balance diagram, is not as significant as the transmissions, represented in light brown at the lower part of the diagram. The upper part of the diagram uses the color red to show the heating demand throughout the cold months of the year. The heating demand is really high for the baseline building. This is not a surprise. We've already run climate analysis on this site. It was presented in the climate analysis video clip of the series. From that climate analysis, we know that winter is cold at the example project's location. Therefore, the baseline building with its poor envelope characteristics will undoubtedly require a lot of heating. In the HVAC Design Data chapter of the Energy Performance Evaluation Report, we can see a thermal block level breakdown of all the yearly and hourly heating and cooling demands. These calculation results can be used to determine the characteristics of the building systems. We will use these results to dimension the building systems of the baseline building for the final performance rating calculation. We didn't specify any shading devices for the baseline building's openings, so the cooling demand during the hot season is quite significant. Still, it's not as dominant as the heating demand due to the project-specific climate conditions. On the project energy balance, we can see that the solar gain, represented in yellow at the top diagram, is compensated by the cooling demand, represented in dark green on the lower diagram. Use the thermal block energy balances to compare the energy performance of the thermal blocks. For example, there's definitely no solar gain in the underground storage area, but there's a huge solar gain in the staircase. There's no cooling demand on the staircase block because there is no not yet specified system assigned to it. Cooling demand, however, does appear for all the rest of the conditioned spaces to which not yet specified coolers were assigned. Let's use the relevant thermal block key values chapter of the report to have a look at the internal temperature values in the staircase during the hottest summer day. The average internal temperature is 26 degrees Celsius, while the maximum internal temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. The hourly internal temperatures that are higher than the maximum allowable internal temperature limit defined for the staircase in the operation profile appear on the report as unmet cooling hours. There is no cooling system in the staircase of the baseline building, and it does not have any shading devices either, so the internal temperature is often unbearably hot in the summer months. There are several solutions the designer can choose from to optimize the energy demand of buildings. In this example, we'll present the so-called low energy building solution set concept. This concept is the result of research carried out by the Solar Heating and Cooling Chapter of the International Energy Agency Task 40 Research Group. It categorizes low-energy building solutions in an easy-to-understand way so that they can be applied effectively and successfully during the design process. The low-energy building solution set concept defines groups based on low-energy building solution types. There are three solution types. The first group is called architectural solutions. The second group is the building system solutions. And the third group is called renewable energy solutions. 
the IEASHC Task 40 research evaluated a large number of low-energy buildings in different climates to determine the relevance of each solution with respect to the weather conditions. This chart shows the results of that study. The three columns represent three different climates. The first column represents the cooling-dominated climates. The second represents the so-called heating-dominated climates. And the third represents the so-called mixed heating and cooling climates. Each row of the table represents a low-energy building solution. The solutions are grouped according to the low-energy building solution set concept. The top group contains the architectural solutions, such as solar shading, orientation, building materials and structures, openings, and natural ventilation. The second group lists the building system solutions, such as mechanical ventilation, heating, and cooling systems. The third group of solutions represents the renewable energy solutions, such as photovoltaic panels, sun collectors, and wind turbines. Our example building project is located in a climate that requires mixed heating and cooling. Please watch the climate analysis video clip to find out more about how to determine the climate characteristics for your design projects. The gray bars represent statistical results about the relevance of the different low energy building solutions in the different climates. Several net zero heating energy buildings were considered throughout the IEA SHC Task 40 research when this chart was created. Let's have a closer look at one of the low energy building solutions as presented on the chart. The thermal mass option is less relevant in cooling dominated climates. While in heating dominated climates, it's very important. Nine out of ten of the buildings investigated use this low energy strategy. In cases of mixed cooling and heating climates, its relevance is roughly in the middle of the two previous cases. The research data validates the concept that groups low energy solutions into climate specific solution sets, since the relevance of each low energy building solution greatly depends on the weather conditions. Let's see the relevance of the different low energy architectural solutions for the mixed cooling and heating climate of our example building. Only the architectural solutions are displayed. The building system and renewable energy solutions are not, because at this stage of the design process, we only evaluate the efficiency of the architectural design solutions. Therefore, in order to investigate the effect of these architectural solutions in an isolated manner, no building systems or renewable energy strategies are added to the project at this point. This enables us to clearly identify the relevance of every low energy architectural solution for our design project. When selecting an architectural low energy building solution, we should consider not only its relevance on a given climate, but also other project specific aspects such as site characteristics, local availability of constructional methods and materials, and the budget as well. The most important task of sustainable building design is finding the optimal combination of low-energy building solutions for every project individually. Such combinations of low-energy building solutions are referenced as project-specific solution sets. Let's investigate the effect of the highlighted four solutions advanced opaque building envelope, good details, advanced fenestration, and solar shading on our example project. We will execute the so-called sensitivity analysis on the example building to measure the exact impact these low-energy building solutions have on the project's overall energy performance. The EcoDesigner STAR sensitivity analysis workflow consists of the following steps. Run an energy simulation on the building in the early design phase when only its shape, zoning, and overall appearance has been decided. In this movie, We've already completed this step and documented the calculation results or baseline result. For the next step, apply the low energy building solutions that we wish to evaluate one by one. Run the building energy simulation, then document these results too. Finally, compare these results with the baseline result for each low energy building solution tested to study their impact on the example building's overall energy performance. The sensitivity analysis enables architects to make informed design decisions, knowing the energy-related consequences of the architectural solutions. Let's test the effect of solar irradiation to illustrate the sensitivity analysis workflow. 
Use the Openings page of the Energy Model Review palette to select all the openings on the building shell and apply an external blind shading device on all of them. Note that EcoDesigner Star's external blind is an intelligent adjustable shading device that's only activated when the internal temperature of the thermal block behind the window on which the shading device is applied becomes greater than 22 degrees Celsius. The Building Energy Performance Report appears on the screen shortly after the Start Energy Simulation button is pressed. Let's compare these results with the baseline results. The baseline results are visible on the left side, and the Energy Evaluation Report, including the effect of the shading devices, is visible on the right side of the screen. Please note that the yellow bars, representing solar gain, are considerably lower during the hot seasons, thanks to the shading devices. This means that less energy is required to cool the interior spaces in the summer. Please notice that the dark green bars, representing cooling energy, are much lower in the report on the right side. Using the method described above for the solar shading, the relevance of other low energy building solutions, for example, advanced opaque building envelope, good details, and advanced fenestration can be tested as well. The most important results of the isolated solution tests are displayed on this sensitivity analysis summary spreadsheet, and each is compared with the corresponding baseline result. The yearly heating and cooling demands, as well as the hourly maximum demands, are listed on the summary spreadsheet. These values appear on the HVAC design data table of the Building Energy Performance Evaluation Report as well. The sensitivity analysis summary spreadsheet also displays the energy savings in percentages for each of the individual low energy solutions compared to the baseline results. The energy savings are also color coded. The amount of the extra investment is indicated by different shades of red while savings are indicated by different shades of blue. Please note that there was practically no change in heating costs due to the installation of the shading devices. However, there is a huge reduction in cooling demand and related cooling costs thanks to the shading devices, both in the annual as well as in the hourly values. This enables us to install lower capacity cooling systems. The advantage of the intelligent shading devices of EcoDesigner Star is that these provide shade when the internal temperature of the thermal block behind the window on which the shading device is applied becomes greater than 22 degrees Celsius. Furthermore, these solar shading devices do not shade the windows in the cold season when solar heat gain helps to reduce the heating demand. Let's have a look at the summary spreadsheet again to evaluate the potential benefits of the other low energy architectural solutions considered for this example project. Using an advanced envelope, we can achieve a huge reduction in the heating demand during cold seasons. This solution does not help reduce the cooling demand though. In fact, more often than not, well-insulated buildings tend to overheat. High-end constructional details also have an impact on the overall energy balance. Advanced fenestration, however, causes a more significant change in the building energy balance of this particular example project. The application of top-of-the-line windows reduces the annual heating demand by over 30% and also reduces the annual cooling demand by 18%. The sensitivity analysis executed for this specific example project and climate shows that we can efficiently apply the low energy architectural solution set containing the following solutions. Advanced building envelope. Upgraded constructional details. Advanced fenestration and openings. And solar shading. Please watch the movie clip entitled Low Energy Demand Architectural Design for further details on how to apply these solutions. Note, besides the sensitivity analysis presented in this clip, other factors such as budget, site conditions, local resources and their availability also influence the application of low energy architectural solutions. All these characteristics should be investigated and considered when making design decisions about the content of the project-specific low-energy building solution set. Let's summarize the workflow presented in this movie clip that help us choose the most appropriate project-specific low-energy architectural design strategy. 
First, we run the energy evaluation on the example project in its so-called baseline design state without any advanced architectural solutions, building systems, or renewable energy solutions. As the next step, we studied the baseline calculation results to understand the energy characteristics of the example building. Simultaneously, we investigated climate-specific options for building energy optimization as recommended by the IEA SHC Task 40 research. Recommendation sets developed by other acknowledged resources could also be considered. After selecting some of the recommended building energy optimization options, we carried out a so-called sensitivity study to identify the exact effect of the individual solutions. Finally, we determined the project-specific low-energy architectural solution set based primarily on the sensitivity analysis results while also considering other relevant factors. Graphisoft Eco Designer Star provides invaluable benefits by helping you select the most appropriate climate and project-specific low-energy architectural solution set. It helps you control the energy demand of the project. It enables you to perform quick sensitivity studies to evaluate different architectural design solutions. And it allows you to scientifically determine the best low-energy architectural solution set for each of your design projects. EcoDesigner STAR for ARCHICAD does not require advanced building energetics or engineering skills. It offers a steep learning curve, so any architect can use it right away.